Well, the snow started about two hours ago, and it doesn't show any signs of letting up soon as we join you from Paul Brown Stadium here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Today, the curtain falls on the regular season, and we've got a good one in store between the Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals. here on first down finding time oh he's gonna air it out right away he couldn't quite hold it got hit ball pops out incomplete so incomplete on first let's see what second down has in store Flacco to throw again on second down and seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. Third down. Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. He's got time in the pocket. Underneath, he hits for Sam. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Call it a pickup of seven, and that'll bring up fourth down. So on fourth down, the Ravens will call on Sam Cook to punt it away. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. Oh, he's going to go ahead and field it from the three-yard line. A great return there of 22 yards. And the Bengals take possession. Now a first carry for Giovanni Bernard. And he's brought down. Ten yards on the pickup there. And it's good enough for a Cincinnati first down. And that run was what a lot of people call an explosive run. Gave them good yardage, solid yardage. They feel good about the whole thing, and they did it behind a two tight end set. It's always interesting to watch what offenses want to do with the two tight ends. Sometimes they line them up together for a power set. Sometimes they put one on each side of the line of scrimmage to balance things out. No matter what, though, when you see two tight ends on the field, your first thought is to think run. In this case, the offense was able to run successfully. It's second down. Dalton looking. Brought in here by Tyler Eifert. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. First down coming there on the intermediate passing play. That's been a point of emphasis, they told us in practice, using those medium routes to keep the defense off balance. And it wasn't just them telling us. We got to watch them practice it and work on it because they've been trying to fine-tune it and get it right before this game. And I think they have to be happy with the result. Throwing right, and that's complete. It's a gain of 20 that time. And that'll be good enough for a Cincinnati first. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that. And that's what he did. Dalton gives to Bernard. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. He only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they were just rolling in. That one goes for 24 yards. And when he started rolling left there as a right-handed quarterback, I thought, boy, this third down play is going nowhere. But credit to him, able to pick up the first. And all you righties who are watching the game at home, get out of your chair, get off the couch. 
Move to your left. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. So holding by the offense and maybe now got to shift up what you want to do on the playbook. Yeah, definitely. Change what you're doing in the playbook, but boy, the advantage shifts to the guys on defense, doesn't it? Longer yard situations, they often become bolder. Now a carry for Bernard. And this play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back to the 15. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Sometimes play calls boil down to philosophy. You know you're facing one of the top 10 units against the run in the NFL. So do you decide to keep smashing against them, or do you decide to throw the ball here? Second down, Dalton rolling to his left. And he's got it. Touchdown, Bengals. A.J. Green with touchdown number 12 on the year. And the Bengals are going to take a first quarter lead. And in the red zone, I guess this is why you have a guy like that on your roster. Without a doubt, if you have him, you use him because he's a guy who's going to win just about every time. I don't care what the coverage is. And after the touchdown, here's Mike Nugent now to kick this one away. This one fielded at the five. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt, they're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. A very solid gain of 27. And let's not take for granted, in these conditions, that's never an easy pass and catch. You really got to find a way to drive the ball. You know, get your grip. You know, that's why we see some of the guys now, they'll put the gloves on when they, when they throw the ball in this type of a condition. Sometimes the glove might make it too slippery. So you got to figure out what's going to work for you. But how about the receivers? Looking back and trying to locate the ball coming through snow and make it. Second quarter now. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis with you. It's the Ravens who have the football, but they face a second and long to start things out. They stay on the ground for set again. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. And he's able to get more than half of what they needed. That brings up a third and five. They've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. To the sideline, and oh, a nice catch there. Made sure the feet were inbounds, and they were. I know where we're headed on this. Terrific catch, gets his feet down, sets up a fourth down and short situation. But I bet we're wondering, why didn't he get to the first down marker running his route? Am I... Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked up. A live ball. Defenders giving chase, but I don't think they're going to get there. And he will score. Touchdown, Cincinnati. We talk about it a lot. One of the dangers of the long field goal, you got to kind of hit it low and drive it. That makes it susceptible to a block here. Not only do they block it, they return it. And how about how well they did on the return where they didn't create a penalty? Oftentimes in that type of a scrambling situation, someone will clip, someone will block below the ways, right? It, you name it. In this case, though, that didn't happen. They formed it up, and he took it all the way back for a touchdown. Here's Dalton to throw for it. He'll buy some time right. Fighting for the end zone. He lost the football. It's out. But this will get out of bounds, so possession will stay the same. So the defense gets the stop. I know it's situation to situation, but who has more pressure there, offense or defense, when they go for two? I, st I truly believe it's the defense has more pressure because the offense has an entire playbook wide open from the two-yard line. You can run it. You can throw it. So defensively, I think most teams are going to be aggressive and force the issue and try and bring pressure. The Ravens offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. On first down, Flacco. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. 
And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. A gain of 32 that time. So here we go, first and 10 now. All right, I've got, I've got to be careful here, all right? He's on the plus side of 30. There may be a little gray in the beard, but that's not slowing down his speed as far as he's concerned. What are you saying? I'm on the plus side of 30. Well, if you're on the plus side of 30, you don't know what I'm on the plus side of. <laughs> all I know is that run right there, let us know there's still some life in those legs. Absolutely, still got a lot of life left in those legs. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it. Now the confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it. We can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. And now it's second and goal. Again, for Sam. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. Well, they've gotten it down to the three, but now this is third and goal. They'll try and pound it in with Tally Afaro. And he will take it in for a Ravens touchdown. Lorenzo Tally Afaro with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Ravens have cut it to within a score. And he's got it up and through. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. On the return, here's the dangerous Cordero Patterson. Stays on his feet. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, they'll start this drive at about the 37-yard line. A minute 57 to go in this first half. We'll come back to Cincinnati after this. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. And he finds a man with a crossing round. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves his sticks. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. Brandon, so many times we see the crossing route start as a quick hitter, but in this play, he had time in the pocket and waited for him to clear going across. Complete to the right side, it's Eifert. And he's brought down. They'll get 16 yards there, and it's good enough for a Cincinnati first down. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. Dancing to his left. His throw caught at about the five. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. On any given pass play, you never know exactly where your exit points are going to be. On this play, he was flushed to his left, still on the run, able to accurately throw the football for a nice first down. Now Bernard, and he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of five there, bringing up second. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Second and goal. They still need eight yards to find the end zone. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10-yard line. It's a loss of two. Now third down. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guy... Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And let's see six defensive backs out there. They're in the dime here on third and goal. And that is caught. He's got it for a Bengal touchdown. Tyler Boyd with his first career NFL touchdown. 
touchdown. And the Bengals are able to grow their lead. That's one of the better examples of clock management I've seen. Riddled it all the way down just about and still put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, just a methodical drive and something really to take into the lockers here. And he atones for his miss the first time around as this one is up and good to extend their lead. the touchdown. Here's Mike Nugent now to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee and that should do it for half number one. So we okay. Well, so much for the halftime report here. Can't, guy can't even finish his Snickers. We're gonna get right to the third quarter. Let me spit this out. This is fielded a couple yards deep, and he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. They send Green to the left on his own. And Dalton to throw. Buying time to his left. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. Second and ten. Dalton once more. And caught. Right side. Green. Holding. Defense. That's one of those ones that is so hard to judge, but defensive holding there, that's what the referee saw. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. A first down throw coming for Dalton. Looking sideline incomplete. Brandon LaFell, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Steps away to his left. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. That one good for 10 yards. And they'll be faced with a third and in inches. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys in plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive, it just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does. And we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So. Their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. So oftentimes you see defensive holding. Here it's offensive holding for the flag. And the penalty now makes it first and 20. Now a play fake here on first down. They'll roll him out right. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. Brandon LaFell, his intended target, and now it's second down. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. They send Green to the left on his own. It's second down. Dalton looking, sliding out of the pocket. And he comes back with one complete. And he'll be out of bounds up near midfield at the 49. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. Let's go, hey, 380. On first and 10, here's Andy Dalton. 
Now he's hit, and Dalton lost the football. And unfortunately, he's able to reel it back in, but it's going to go down as a big loss here on the play. Well, that was a big oops right there, but how about his ability to correct it? Loses the football, able to get it back himself. Yeah, pounced right back on it, keeps possession. Second down, Dalton. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move them all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one, they were just unable to complete the pass. Now he's going to, and that's caught inside the 35. And he's brought down after a good game. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either play off or make sure you're somehow in contact with him. And he's able to do exactly what you said. Use the speed to his advantage and go up and get the football. That's a big time play right there. Brandon, that play ended so fast, it's almost as if the quarterback handed it to the runner and the tackler was there right away for a loss of yardage. One receiver left, two to the right. Dalton throwing on second down. Rolling to his right. On the run. Got a man. It's LaFell for the Bengal touchdown. Brandon LaFell, his second touchdown on the season. And the Bengals add on to their lead. We're looking down at my game card here. That's five drives now for them and four touchdowns. I think anybody would take an 80% ratio. I'm sure that they would, but if you flip it over to the other side of the ball, what are they going to hang their hat on? There was one possession. They held them to no score whatsoever. That's where they're going to try and build on and try and slow this team down. And a nice return sets them up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Bengals defense gearing up as they take the field. to get the running game going with Forsan. Trying to get out wide, but he's going to be tackled right near the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. I can't help it. I'm just sitting back in admiration right now. This defense tells everyone that plays against them, you're not beating us running the football. That's who we are. That's what we're about. It's not going to happen. If you're going to beat us, you better pick another way. We just saw another example of how the defense is winning this game. Really at the point of attack, the offensive line is just getting pushed around. I think now as a play caller, you got to give them a little bit of help. Maybe keep your tight ends a little bit more. Maybe the running backs help you a little bit with the pass blocking. But you've got to help them get some confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now. Fresh set of downs here. Well, the advantage has certainly shifted to the defense as we began that third down play, and they found a way to foil it and pick up a first down. Third time's a charm, right? Two incompletions. Had to have it on third, and they got it. Yeah, they stuck with it, weren't daunted at all, and picked it up. Tackle made that time by Michael Johnson. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to... Back now in Cincinnati. It's the Ravens with possession of the football, but trailing on the big board as we get set for the fourth. On second down, Flacco to throw. He's got time. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball, and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. They'll set up the screen for Forsett. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. And here comes play number six on this drive. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sensed that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. So the hard count gets them there. Neutral zone infraction. Yeah, the defense thought they had the timing down, but the quarterback hit them with a hard count, got them to jump. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. 
And he is out of bounds inside the 30. It's a gain of five on the play, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? Toe the tap. Yeah, you got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything. And sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. On the carry, it's Taliaferro. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Lorenzo Taliaferro. His second touchdown of the game and his ninth on the year. And the Ravens get a bit closer. He's doing his part, but still facing a sizable deficit. And he would like to do more, but he needs help from the other two-thirds, right? He needs his defense to bow up a little bit, and he also needs special teams to maybe create some big plays and help them get back in it. And this is going to be snuffed out. The Bengals recover. Uh, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. They'll come out in the pistol. And now a first chance for the backup here to throw. Complete to the right side. It's Eifert. And he is out of bounds, just a yard or two shy of the 10. A big play that time on the catch and run. 32 yards. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and take him to look like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. Call it a gain of five, and it'll be second down. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they can do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but they have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks. Those guys are worth their weight in gold. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. To throw, McCarron forced out to his left. He can run for it, and he will. And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. 
That was an excellent job of recognizing the situation. His first read wasn't there. Heck, his second read wasn't there. But he bought himself a little extra time scrambling out of the pocket, right, go. got to the sticks, and picked up the first down. First and goal. Defense with their backs against the wall. And now the Raven defense is going to call a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. They'll run here with Bernard. And, and now the Ravens are going to take another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. From back at the three now. This is third and goal. Takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Bengals. Giovanni Bernard, his 11th touchdown of the year. And the Bengals are able to grow their lead. But they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times, that's a passing play. And the kicker just has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although, I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. the touchdown. Here's Mike Nugent now to kick this one away. Very short kick. This will be taken by one of the up men. And they're going to have really good starting field position here as that's taken up close to the 40. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved the hand like, who cares? Let's get out of here and do something some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. And he's brought down. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. And now they're in the hurry up. Flacco. Right side catch, Gilmore. Nothing on that one. It'll be second down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Off the draw from Flacco. It's for set. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Flacco. And this is going to be incomplete. This one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. Ten yards still left on second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. Now flags come in. I think one of the Ravens got Post going a little early. Offense. here on second down. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. He was trying to find Justin Forsett that time, and that'll make it third down. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. The good signal callers will never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line. This time for Smith, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the Alabama man, Drake Kirkpatrick.
So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. It's always the final play of preparation each week. The practicing of the kneel down formation, the victory formation. We've got a game in hand, and that's all they're going to want to do now. They'll put someone back deep just in case something goes haywire. But all in all, take the snap, kneel down, and, and shake hands. Yes. <laughs> Get out of there. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. Alert, alert. Right, here we go. On second down, Hill muscles him off. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, right, they created some nice space for him. On third down, here's Hill. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Call it a gain of five. Fourth down now. So many things going to making a good play on defense. In this situation, just not being blown out of the way was a big start. And then a nice tackle to finish things off. And now on fourth and one, it's a fake. And the gamble pays off. They get the first. Oh, partner, there's something...